and I today, Matthews, two games. Let's start off with that. Uh, oh, we're just getting right into it. What were your yeah. thoughts? I thought it's either going to be like one big fine or and or one game. Two games, I'm like, okay, it might be a little much from uh, the – because as soon as they announced it, everyone in the comment section was showing like little clips of all the other times it's happened in the league in like probably just the last month. Yeah. And it's only been a couple thousand dollar fine for a game suspension. And he's not a repeat offender. Is this, is this the first time he's been suspended or? Yeah. 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 So I thought it was a little harsh, but it was bad. So I guess. I think what a lot of Leaf fans are bothered by isn't the suspension. I think everyone would probably agree that, like, you shouldn't do that in the NHL. Uh, that's yeah. assault. Um, yeah, going for and, the head. Yeah, and it should be a suspendable offense. The issue is that there's no precedent for it. And all the other times when people have done the exact same thing, to even people on the Leafs, there's examples of people on the Leafs, like the Wayne Simmons, Edmondson thing. The guy got that a was bad. And then I saw one guy in the comments say, uh, well, it's different between playoffs and regular season. It's like the whole point of player safety. Like, I understand penalties are different, but cross-checking yeah. someone in the head, it should be consistently not okay. You know? So, yeah. like, it either you, like, I guess, whatever, start with Matthews. But now if I ever see that again, and I'm going to expect at least two games, and especially if a guy has a history, he should get more. Yep. Right? But if the same thing happens tomorrow – Mm -hmm. to a guy on Dallas, you know, and well, we play Dallas tomorrow, but <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen. But like, and there's nothing, then that's, it's just going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. And I know yeah. there's like a narrative that like a lot of people are saying like, oh, just like Leaf fans are so butthurt about, because it, they always say like our crying wolf, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, no, man, we're 28th in the league this year at drawing penalties um and for the past like three years have been near the bottom of the league and drawing penalties with one of the fastest and best teams it just doesn't that doesn't make math doesn't sense. add up yeah it just doesn't add up and then for that to happen and then it was last night people were sharing a video of jonathan huberdo like just elbowing someone in the head uh and getting nothing so yeah. it's just you know i don't know just some consistency is literally all people want just yeah, I think that's the biggest thing right there. Yeah, no one is saying that what Matthews did shouldn't have been at least a fine. Like, it's illegal. Yeah. yeah. Just call other people the same way that you're going to call the Toronto Maple Leafs players. Yeah, you know, I think we simple. got that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it Hopefully sucks. everyone agrees. Yeah, it sucks because, like, you want to see the guy get 60 goals. And it's going to be a little tougher for him to do it. I still think he does do it. Um, yeah. But I was kind of hoping that he'd beat the, in the 2000s anyways, beat Ovechkin's, I think it was 65. I was hoping that he would have a chance to do that. Now that's definitely not going to happen. So yeah, yeah. let's just beat Sam Kose's from like four years ago or something. I think that was 60. So let's just try and beat that. But uh, just, yeah, it sucks. But he'll have many more years to be able to do it, right? Yep, still super young. <laughs> yeah, and missed a bunch of games at the start of the season and then was coming back from wrist. So oh, didn't yeah. Any points at the start. So he, like, if he keeps up the, he's scoring like a goal a game in the last 40, you know? <laughs> it's like, there's no way to think this guy at some point in his career might not even get 70. So, yep. yeah. Um, it, it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how we do the next two games, which are against, I think, Dallas and Carolina without the best player in the league. Yeah. And, it might actually help his uh, heart trophy chances. Not like anyone actually cares about the heart trophy because it's a player trophy, but like if they do poorly, it'll be like, this is how much this guy means to our team. Yeah. Right. With him gone, it leaves room for other players to get ice time unless you're Nick Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. So Robertson sent down, Dahlstrom brought up. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan had some thoughts on this that it might be like making way for Robertson trade and something to do with cap shenanigans that we have no idea about. Um, but then he, he also, we also all in kind of agreement that like the Manson trade, which we can get to, to kind of set the precedent for maybe people aren't like you're not going to be needing to give up as much as we originally thought for a top four defenseman. Yeah. 
And it was 50% retained. For people who don't know, Manson uh, was gotten by the Colorado Avalanche for some guy and a <laughs> second round pick next season for 50% retained too. Yeah, so, that's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Now, I for, all, for all the people saying that Tron made the Leafs, like, oh, why couldn't we go get him? He was apparently, the Leafs were on his no trade list. So we couldn't have got him even if we wanted. Um, and that might have actually really pushed the price down because he, there were teams that were interested that couldn't have a bidding war with the Avalanche. Um, but for the people who are still wanting that defenseman, the rumors are, mm-hmm. uh, I believe from Elliot Friedman, that Hampus Lindholm, who Mark didn't know before today, but nope. knows now and hopefully knows on the Toronto Maple Leafs soon, is uh available and that i mean the same team just gave up didn't ask for that much for josh manson and lynn holmes less of a household name so what are your thoughts what have you learned today about him just from doing some quick research yeah you message in the group and immediately i'm like that's a forward on calgary lindholm and he's like no it's the defenseman (laughs) oh frig i've never heard of this guy (laughs) so all day i just slowly been reading more and more about him and everything written about him is all really positive and he's not like a like a chikrin or like uh klingberg who are offensive guys he's he's balanced but a little more defensive so like the one write up said he's basically another Brody because his advanced stats are super similar. Great at the uh, exits, great in the defensive zone. He can be physical, but he hasn't really been over. Like he's not a guy who's going to light up the hits yeah. or like big Brody. block shots, but yeah. he's just super solid. So now I'm really excited because mm-hmm. that's the guy we need. That's the exact kind of guy that you could play with Jake Muzzin, who is not the old Jake Muzzin and could still be a two-way defender, but could still play good defense and be honest, that could be a shutdown pair. Um, yeah. He's also, for everyone who's like, we need big guys, he's 6'4", 216. So he's not a small dude. He's 28, uh, has 22 points this season. So he's not too big of a, I think, uh, I think Lilligren has around that. So it's not like he's the most, uh, the biggest point getter, but yeah. just think about this D, this D group. If you um, could have Riley Brody reunite them because they're an amazing pair, Muzzin and Lynn Holm, and then your third can be Sandine and the Boosh, and that is a great <laughs> with uh, Lilligren as an extra. Um, yeah, and Hall and or Dermot. I'm sure that you will have to get rid of one of those guys at least uh, mm-hmm. for cap space, and just because that's a that's too many defensemen. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, so. Yeah, that could be. Now, the, the thing that I was thinking, my mind went to <laughs> Dubas ha, does have a history of going out and doing like two things at once, you know, whether it's the same trade or right back to back, you know, like Riddich. Um, and I, the Anaheim Ducks, have two other guys that I would really like to see on this team. And one we've talked to about a bunch is Ricard Raquel. Yeah. Um, now that would mean that we would, if we got both those guys, it would be a hefty price, especially with cap stuff. Now yeah. getting rid of Morazic somehow makes it more doable. But the other guy is Anthony Stollers, who I talked with Din in there. If you've watched our podcast from uh, that was out today, uh, he has a I think nine eighteen save percentage. Played twenty games, I believe. Um, he's played on the uh, Minnesota Wild. He's just the guy that is what Morazic was supposed to be. He's not your number one, but mm-hmm. he can play in a tandem and be serviceable. And if the Leafs had a 918, or if the Leafs had a 910 goalie, we would be in first place in our division right now. Right? Yep. We only had one month of like a stupid 940 save percentage. The rest have been under 900. So my thing is my optimal trade would be a Stolars and Lindholm for... I, I would even be okay with, I don't think, my three untouchables I said in the group earlier were Nyes, um, Namala, and who's the third guy? Robertson. 
Robertson. And we can touch on Robertson after, but like those are my three untouchables. I'm okay with giving away pretty much anyone else. And I'm okay with giving up a first if that means that we can have both of these guys on our team. Yeah. Right. So what are your thoughts? Yeah. Everyone's like, we got to hold on to the picks and uh, I'm just, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't mind. We're, Ram- we're Rams fans, dude. We can't. Yeah. Care. I think FM that's why picks. it just shows that <laughs> like, if you just get the right pieces, like this team's already good, but if you just, just sew it up, like we're there. Yeah. So like, I really, I would love that. I, the fenceman definitely. And then, yeah, like you said, if we could still pick up uh, like a backup goalie that is supposed to be a good backup, like we need another McElhaney, <laughs> the best backup ever. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what we wanted Mrazic to be. And it's just been a pretty epic failure. Yeah. And it's going to be so hard to get rid of him. But Waivers. if we do... Yeah. Just stuck him on waivers. Or, hey, Anaheim, you want a goalie for the next couple of years who could be decent in, like, a less pressure situation because no one cares about Anaheim, let's be real. Like, uh, they're not even the most popular team in their own city. So, like, so, okay, so I, I just did bring up Stoller's st- stats. First of all, he's 6'6", yep. 243. So he's a big dude. Um, I would make the old-timers happy. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah, even though even if he's a goalie and doesn't throw checks, that would make him happy. Yeah, uh, okay. He's big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's played 21 games, nine wins, six losses, uh, 2.66 goals against and a 919 save percentage. His career save percentage over 55 games is 916 and he's only 28. So uh, that that's the guy that's, that's what we need. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, so I, I would just be so big on giving away I'm down with giving away first. And the way I view draft picks is yeah, I do have a bit of a bias because we're Rams fans, but the NFL is objectively the first round. You have better selection of potential all-stars than in the NHL, at least in the bottom half, which is what we're going to be drafting anyways. Right. Yeah. Like if you're in the NFL and you're drafting 31st, you're still going to get a starter the next year, Like he better start. Right. Yep. If you're in the NHL and you're drafting 31st, you're taking a flyer. The difference between the 31st pick and like a 50th or 60th pick isn't too yeah. much difference. Right. Yeah. So I'm okay with giving it, especially because we're able to get guys like Ty Boyd. We're able to get like our Sandine was a second round draft. Like uh, Robertson was set. Like we're so good at drafting. I just believe in these guys. I'm, I'm okay with giving up first. Just keep, yep. you know. <laughs> We have we have guys coming up. We have Nyes coming up. We have uh, Niemela coming up. We have uh, Hervin and uh, Holmberg as potential guy. Like, um, it, and we're able to attract people to a franchise that has Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, and William Nylander and Morgan Riley locked up long term. Yeah. So uh, I don't think we're gonna. Ha- you can still get the caches every year. You know, you can still get the guys like the Jason Spezzas who want to finish it. J- Mark Giordano next year. You know, like he's a free agent sign him yeah. for a Jason Spezza contract you know like have him for a couple of years it's just in case you need a guy in your uh, mm-hmm. middle of your defense but yeah so I, I have a question then um I've seen a ton in the last 24 hours Kyle Dubas has been a failure since starting <laughs> do you have any thoughts on well, what are your thoughts uh immediately i'm like oh come on he's been awesome but i'm like well has he been awesome is it the team's fault is it dubis's fault for the first round exits is it the injuries like i think he's done pretty well but but, uh yeah i feel like this trade deadline is gonna put a lot of pressure on him just because (laughs) <laughs> the ship is sinking right now and we're still in third which is crazy it feels like we're in the middle of the table and we're fighting for a wild card spot but like we're doing well still but it we're just in doesn't the playoffs. feel like it we might yeah. as well be a lock for the playoffs yeah. yeah and it just doesn't feel like it right now yeah. so i don't know i still feel like 
he's like he's made so many good pickups, but everyone just highlights the ones that don't uh like don't hit. That's like anything. And it's just right? wild. Yeah. It's, it's just literally nitpicking. like anything. Yeah. Yeah. And like, okay, so his worst deal, we can all agree, was the Kadri um trade. Mm-hmm. Right. Like how nice would it be up to Kadri at 4.5 million right now on this team? Like that would be absolutely insane. Um but when that trade happened, we all kind of I think there was very few people who said that it wasn't something that either needed to happen or like was expected. And I think there was so much pressure on him to make a deal and finally pair Riley, which management hadn't done before Dubas, ever mm-hmm. paired Riley with anybody good his entire career. And I mean, Brody's contract is insane. Like that's so good, you know, yep. to have a guy like that. Muzzin is hindsight. Like the guy had three absolutely amazing years with us and he's still fine. Like $5 million for, I think it's five or maybe six, uh, 5.5 or something like that. Um, it's like, you can't expect to drop off that fast, but guys are going to drop off. Name one bad contract on the Toronto Maple Leafs. You could maybe say John Tavares, but you had to get him here. He took mm-hmm. less money to come here and yep. we thought the cap was going to go up. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that Dubas is my favorite GM of uh, all time because I have total trust in his scouting and his drafting to the point where I'm okay with giving up a first. Um, and I'm a, I have total faith that he's going to do exactly what we need at the deadline. Mrazek is another one where people are criticizing. I didn't like, you remember in the group chat, before, like when we were just starting at this podcast, I was like, I hate this deal. I hate it because how are we going to get Jack? And I really had a lot of faith in Jack. And it seemed like 3.6 or whatever for Mrazek. I was, uh, it was like, meh. But yeah, everyone was like, we need a, goal, a goaltender. We need a backup goaltender. We need a tandem goaltender. He goes yeah. out and does it. It just didn't, it just didn't work out. Sometimes these things happen. Yeah, because I remember I was like, oh, he's perfect at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and uh, like if he would be the Peter Morazic that he's been in his entire career this year, yeah, it would have been an absolutely amazing signing. You, how could you expect that this guy would have like an 890 save percentage? Yeah, four goals every single game, yeah. no matter yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, I, I, I think that people are overreacting. I think we should cross this bridge when um in the playoffs yeah and yeah. this trade deadline will be big because if we can go out and get a guy like Lindholm and Stollers I would be hard pre- like I think that's a Stanley Cup winning roster and somehow you're able to get rid of Mrazi even if that means waivers yeah well, it might be best for both sides have him go to a team where he can just restart his career you know yeah, because he definitely yeah. needs it. He's getting eaten alive. He's getting eaten alive, yeah. I can't find the tweet again, but there was some rumor that Leafs are in talks with Colorado over some oh. kind of trade. But Yeah, I saw that too. It was like uh, Darcy Kemper. If Colorado was to go get Simeon Barlamov from the Islanders, that they would then need to off because they just signed Frank Coos to a three-year I believe, mm-hmm. contract. So they would need to offload Kemper um, in which the Leafs could pick him up. Yeah. Great if that happens, but like that's expecting that they go out and get Farlam off. And like, why do they need to do that? <laughs> you know, it, I, like if, if they go and get Varlam off, then obviously I would see that as a potential solution, but they have two goalies who are like 920s. Yeah, that they yep. just signed for long term. So why are they going out and getting Simeon Barlamov? <laughs> you know, yeah, it wouldn't make a total, wouldn't make total sense for them. But I also did... don't want to make a deal with Colorado because Sakic always wins. <laughs> you know, like even if it's an equal trade at the time, it'll somehow be that whoever he legend. Gets. Yeah, he. Let's say we trade and we trade away Ronnie Hervin. He's going to be like an 80 point player in two years you know like it's just it's just don't deal it with Sakic, please <laughs> um okay uh the thing i wanted to touch on because we brought him up earlier was uh, nick robertson um, mm-hmm. i have a monologue i'm gonna go on but what are your just like take my opinion because you know my opinion on robertson out of the equation 
I yeah. actually am interested. What are what do you think of Robertson? And go for what you actually think. Yeah, because I know you guys are high on him. I'm not as high on his potential. I like, I think he's. I agree that his mindset and like just drive to want to win, banging his stick on the ice, asking for it at all times. Like it's so sick, but like. <sighs> I don't see the superstar potential that you guys see. I think he's going to be all right, mm -hmm. but I, uh, I'm not really like sold on him, which is why I wouldn't really mind if he got put in a, a trade since his potential, mm -hmm. like his stock is really high right now. So you could sell high because I feel like it won't be as high in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there any reason that you say is it just you just ha it like hasn't passed the eye test? Is there a particular plays? It's like the eye test, and like even when he's in the Marlies, he's not like the greatest guy out there. Like he's not mm. lighting the league up. So I don't know why they expect him to light the league up in the NHL. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said that I don't expect him to be a superstar. Uh, but he, so here's why I like guys like Nick Robertson is because in every pro level. I think what so many guys are talented. I think what separates guys who can be stars, and I, that's what I expect Robertson to be. I don't think he's going to ever be his brother. I just mm -hmm. want to get that out of the way because his brother's taller. His brother has like two hat tricks in a row. He's put up like a point a game for his entire for his career so far. Mm -hmm. so he's not going to be his brother. Um, but I think he can be a really, really good top six player because of mindset and in the NFL, we keep going back to these NFL, uh, yeah. NHL comparisons, but like what separates a good quarterback from a mediocre quarterback? In the end, what you have to be willing to do is to spend hours and hours, days and days in the film room, wanting to get better, doing all the stuff that no one gets to see out there to become mm -hmm. the absolute best, to become Peyton Manning, who like can just know exactly what your defense is before, right? And that's why, uh, that's why I think that Robertson can become great and understand it's not as much study. It does come down to talent a little bit more, um, mm -hmm. but because he's so driven, he's always the last one out in the ice. And I think in the NHL, the difference between the NHL and other leagues is you have to be rich to be good and to make it to the NHL. That's like, you don't. it's the only league where you kind of have to. Yeah, for to sure. Good, right. The <laughs> amount of money it takes to buy equipment, to rent ice you know like you kind of mm -hmm. like there's a reason that so many players raised by their like parents who've been in the league because they will have access to ice they'll have a skating rink out back right we all know the kids in our hometowns who had skating rinks and who would go to all the power skating stuff and they ended up just getting better yeah. than everyone else right you don't so, hear like rag to riches stories in the nhl very rarely right yeah yeah um so a lot of these people, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, have had a silver spoon a lot of their life. Not to say there's necessarily mm -hmm. anything wrong with that, but if you're coming, yep. you're being like heralded as like the coolest person in the world because you've always been yep. on the best hockey teams for your entire life, especially if you come from Canada. I'm sure Scandinavia is pretty much similar because the hockey is the biggest sport there too. So then you get to the NHL and your whole life, yeah, you've worked hard. But in the end, mindset maybe wasn't the thing that was taught most to you because you've always been told you've been the best. You've always you've come from um, an affluent family, and then you're thrust in the NHL, and it's like, oh, I, I'm so talented. I don't. The mindset comes after, which is why you see veterans mattering so much, is because mm -hmm. they're going to teach you the mindset that it takes to still be great so long in your career. So when you Very get true. a guy like Nick Robertson, who from birth. Like he was born like premature from birth. He was like, he almost died, you know, like he has always been the smallest guy on the ice, which I can relate to in my life too. And then he comes up and he's Haley Wickenheiser saying like, you need to calm down. Like you're way too into it. Like you're way too driven. You're way too motivated. And this is something that this guy has had to learn for his entire life is like mindset is what matters. And he's say, saying things like when he just comes back from breaking his leg and then puts up a point of game, on the Toronto Marlies and they're saying, I'm going to get called up. And then he gets called up. Like that's the kind of guy that I want on my team 
because I think that those are the type of guys, especially in hockey, that are going to rise to the top, even if he doesn't necessarily have the size, because what do we, what do we get mad at Marner for? We get mad at Marner because it seems like uh, sometimes he's a bit of a, a diva. There's been like those reports that, mm. like, in the dressing yeah, room. Yeah. A diva. What did we get mad at William Leolander for? He didn't seem to back check at the start. He seemed like he sometimes took yeah, some time off. Around. Right. So there's a guy who's not doing any of that because he's so, yeah. you know, like you've got to keep those guys. That's just my thought. That's why I love Nick Robertson. That's why I think that he's going to be a star, not a superstar. But he's going to be a star. And okay. also, it's a reason to cheer for someone because you know he's been counted out for so much of his time. And then you also compound the fact that his brother is doing so well that that's some extra motivation, you know? Like, I don't have a brother. You don't have a brother. But, like, we've been around people who have brothers and there's some competition there, you know? Oh, yeah. So, Every like, time. exactly. So, if you see that with that guy's mindset and then also seeing his brother doing so, so well – I just have so much faith in him. And that's why I don't want to see him go. He's my untouchable. So that's my okay. monologue on Nick Robertson. Yeah. Does that change your mind at all? Did I sell him to you? Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like the expectations are you're not shooting for this, like the stars. With, so, yeah. 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 But yeah, I could see the value there for sure. 60 point player, you know, he turns into like a Kasperi Kapanen ish type player, then yeah. you're, you're winning. And, and, uh, I actually don't think his value is that high right now. I think that it's going to be higher in the next year because next year he will be in the top six. You know, he's going to start off the year playing with Tavares and Nylander. I don't think there's any doubt. Um, I mean, we're losing, we're going to lose Kasha. We're going to lose Mikheyev. Um, Spez is probably going to be gone. There's going to be a lot of holes in this roster that people are going to need to fill. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be one of the, I think Nyes and him will be guys that take steps next season but that'll be a later okay game. yeah <laughs> um so yeah we play the dallas stars tomorrow i believe yeah uh, they just so, had a rowdy game too yeah well who is it against again oh gosh uh, montreal maybe hmm. dallas Let's montreal see. makes might make sense because they would do the canadian trip. <laughs> uh oh no they just played the rangers and they got smoked seven to four nice Nice. Well, that Saturday. sounds like a leaf type game. So uh, I it'll feel be like it was Dallas because I just saw a bunch of clips. Uh, oh, I think you're thinking Minnesota and Detroit. Oh, Similar that's jerseys. It. I is green. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> Minnesota. Um, yeah, but yeah, they just got killed. So it's just gonna be both teams are pissed probably coming into yeah. it. So it'll be fun. No Matthews, so that's gonna suck. The new lines are are pretty interesting, um, and. Yeah, I think Matthews is, for all the people who are saying, like, this, he needs to stand up for himself, blah, blah, blah. Guy finally stands up for himself, like, dirty player. What a, you know, it's you just can't like, win. You, yeah. you can't win. You can't win. I wish these guys would fight for their players, and then they do, and it's like, yeah. whoa, look at these idiots. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you want? Yeah, and I, I loved, like, Michael Bunting at the end there, like, you know, standing up, Mikheyev tackling Mikheyev. a guy, Tage Thompson, like six, six, seven. You guys Big just boy. tackles him, you know, and that's, uh, it's, they're showing some life. I'm, I'm pissed off watching the referee. It almost makes me want to turn off games because it's just so bad. And it's objectively so bad. It, yeah, it clear and obvious mistakes yeah. a game after game recently. And it's, yeah, it's making me really frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I can only it. imagine what they're because I remember playing in games where the refereeing was bad, and those mm-hmm. were the games I played the best in. Because when I got mad, I'm a pretty con- but when I got mad, it was just like that was when I played the best. And I feel like Austin Matthews is the same. I feel like William Nylander is the same. Mm-hmm. And John Tavares showed that. Remember that one shift he had where he just absolutely just destroyed worlds randomly, and then hasn't been that again. But when he gets mad, you know, yeah, and he's gonna be on the top line. Oh yeah. It'll be it. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that top line does. But um, Michael Bunting, we both can't say enough good words about that guy. He's just, yeah, he's been be pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to touch on before we end this one? Uh, just got to mention it again. I love the Boosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's so awesome. Like, yeah, I have full confidence when he's out there. The other team's not scoring. Yeah, and. So, yeah. He has another uh, shout out. 
uh, shout out to downtown Stephen Brown who came out with the tweet saying that like our goaltenders have like a nine, like a high save percentage when Boosh is on the ice. And then when every other defenseman's on the ice, it's under 900. Oh, really? Yeah. So the Boosh. That's back it up. Is the truce. <laughs> 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 all right we're gonna leave it off there uh and uh this will be up tonight and then we'll do a post game for the dallas game we'll try mark's finishing up his finals and stuff pretty yeah, soon i'll so be able to do a post tomorrow yeah we'll be able to do more post games and get more content out for you guys in preparation for the playoffs but bold prediction for tomorrow night i'm going uh do you think calgren starts we didn't oh. even talk about that. Who's starting? Like, do you put Mrazic back in? If we don't make a trade, I think that they do put Mrazic back in to give, like, I know I said this last game, one final <laughs> look. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can, I'm going to say that every game. I'm going to say that every game. One final <laughs> shot. I hope they put Calgren in, uh, but I think it probably will be. Okay, I'm going to say if Calgren's in, we win 5 3. Mm. If Mrazic's in, I say we go to overtime and lose 5-4. All right. Okay. Uh, my uh, bold prediction is John Tavares is going to net two. Yeah. He's going to finally get some goals going here because he's getting close. every. He's getting so close. And so I think he, fin- <laughs> he finally gets one. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's it for us here. Uh, if you guys have any... Uh, thoughts of like who you're going to want to target for trades. What do you think of the possibility to get both Stellars and Lynn home? Do you like it? And then what are your thoughts on Nick Robertson? Does anyone agree with me or does anyone feel a little bit more like Mark? So uh, let us know in the comments.